Hi everyone and welcome to Autopilot Training 101. So the aim of today's session is to help you get set up on the Autopilot platform as a user and feel comfortable in creating your first journeys. Now, a little bit about me before we get started. So my name is Eloise and I'm a customer success manager here at Autopilot. Um, what some of you may know about me, but a majority of you probably won't, is uh, I actually started my career as a marketer in the loyalty space. So I'm really aware of the common frustrations felt by traditional marketing methods and then how they can be overcome by automation, which is kind of this new space uh, that everybody's talking about. Now, I've also worked with a number of SaaS companies across the US, the UK, uh, and most recently Australia. Um, so I really do understand the demands of different markets and customer personas, and hopefully I'll be able to share a few tips and tricks with you along the way today uh, to tie in all of that experience um, for you as we go through today's session. So here at Autopilot, my role is very much focused on implementation and ongoing strategy. So I'm really super excited to be taking you all through the platform today, uh, as well as those key configuration steps. And I really can't wait to see the fantastic journeys that you guys implement off the back of these sessions. Now, we do have quite a bit to cover today, but I am going to be spending the majority of the time in the autopilot platform. And there's really five key areas that I'd like to focus on. The tracking code, contact imports and segmentation, form tracking, emails, and last but not least, journey creation. Um, now, one thing to let you know as well is that I would really like to approach this session as though I'm a new customer on the Autopilot platform. So I'm going to pretend, as it were, um, that I've just signed up for a 10,000 contact plan so that we can navigate through these configuration steps together as though I am a new user. Uh, and hopefully that'll give you a lot of insight and context to take away to be able to implement these steps on your side uh, after today's session. The other thing I'm going to do is leave 15 minutes at the end for a QA. and a um, So to that end, I really do want today to be as useful as possible for everyone that's on the line. So please feel free to ask me any questions you might have as we go through the training today using the GoToMeeting panel that you can see on the right-hand corner uh, of your screen. I'll be taking these questions through uh, and then addressing them one by one as we get to that 15 minute Q&A session. So uh, don't hesitate, pop them in the window and then really I'll just go from top to bottom and hopefully we'll cover all outstanding questions uh, that I haven't been able to address as we go through today's session. Now, without any further ado, let's get started and I'm going to pop on over uh, into Chrome and just adjust my screen across for you so that you can see that too. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I really do want to walk through today's session as though I'm a new autopilot customer uh, and somebody that's just signed up for a 10,000 contacts plan through autopilot. So my demo business today will be an e-commerce platform that you can see on my screen at the moment. Uh, it's called the work mode and it sells workwear fashion for professional men and women. Um, so just keep this business in mind as we go through. I'll tie a lot of these main configuration steps uh, and scenarios back to this. Um, so just keep in mind kind of the, uh, the use case here and the business model that I have built out for today's demo session. Now, the first topic that I would like to cover today is the autopilot tracking code and how you can go about adding that to your web pages and your app if you do have an app that you're leveraging uh, for your business. So adding the autopilot tracking code is really one of the most fundamental configuration steps for new users because it unlocks a number of key pieces of functionality within the autopilot dashboard, including the lead funnel and activity feed that you see on your screen when you first log into autopilot. Most importantly, though, it's through the autopilot tracking code that you're able to monitor visitor activity across your web pages and then turn any anonymous visitors into known visitors through a couple of key autopilot triggers, including form capture, proactive heads up, and also email engagement. 
Now, we are going to get to each of these known user triggers in the two-part webinar series, but let's dive into that tracking code first because it really is through the tracking code that you can unlock those key features that we've just spoken about. So to start with, you'll want to navigate to the settings panel of your autopilot dashboard, which can be accessed through the cog wheel on the left-hand side of the panel here uh, that you can see me hovering over. And then you'll want to select tracking code. Now, from here, we ask you to select the type of tracking code that is most relevant to your product. And you can see that we offer two different versions. One is for web pages, and that can be used across all of your web assets. And the other is for uh, applications or apps uh, that you've built out at your end for your company. So depending on the type of platform that you're leveraging, uh, you can come in here and select the tracking code that's right for your business, and then go ahead and add that to either your web pages or your app pages. Today though, because my business is an e-commerce platform, um, I'm going to take you through the setup and configuration steps for the web page tracking code, as that's most applicable to my business. But keep in mind that these steps will be the same if you're looking to add the tracking code to your app. So you can just head on into the app tracking code and follow the steps that we're going to go through now to add it to your app pages. So clicking on web page tracking code, um, you can see that within each of your accounts, we've generated a unique HTML tracking code for you to use across your web pages and also any of your web assets, including landing pages, blogs, um, etc. So this unique HTML tracking code works very much like Google Analytics. Um, and one thing to keep in mind here is that it really will have minimal impact on your page load times. So if this is something that you're concerned about or your tech team is concerned about, um, please don't be. We have tested it uh, very rigorously at our end and created it in such a way that it really will have minimal impact to that page load time at your end. Now to add it, you simply need to copy the full code as you can see here, uh, I am doing in my account and then paste it into the header tag of every page that you wish to track. Um, now, not to sound too cook show hosty, uh, but here is one that I did earlier. So I'm gonna head on over to uh, my demo site. And if you inspect uh, or view my page source, you'll see here um, upon searching for autopilot that I have that full tracking code here uh, embedded to my uh, page source code just above the head tag. So again, uh, on your end, you'll just need to make sure that wherever you paste it on the page is in the head tag and just before the closing of those head tag um, tags that you can see here on my screen. So finding those head tags on your web pages will probably differ across website creation tools, but we have put together a really great step-by-step -step guide to adding the code once you've found the, uh, the header tag place on your website creation tool. And I'm actually gonna share that with all of you in a follow-up email after today's webinar. But if you're keen to access those instructions at a later date, or there's anybody else in your account that wants to log in and find them uh, without having access to my email, you can actually email them to yourselves just by selecting this email link at the bottom of your screen and entering in your email address um, and clicking, of course, send instructions. Now, pro tip here, uh, if you are going to be getting the help of a tech team to add the tracking code to your pages, um, you can also go ahead and just add in the email address of your tech team and then hit send instructions uh, and that step-by-step -step guide will go straight over into their inbox so they have them to hand um, and it can be as quick and easy as possible for them to implement this part of the setup for your autopilot account. Once the tracking code has been placed successfully on your web pages, there's two places that you'll be able to see it. One is when you inspect the source code of the page, like I just showed you on my demo site. Uh, and the other great indicator is on the autopilot dashboard when you first log in, the activity feed will start to populate with visitor activity across your web pages 
or across your app, depending on the pages that you've added that code for. So you can see in my account that because I have the tracking code on my uh, work mode pages, I'm now tracking activity for both unknown users and also known users across my website uh, and that this is starting to fill up with that activity in my, uh, in my feed here. Now, the difference between an unknown or an anonymous user here and a known user, you can see down here with my uh, full name, added uh, alongside that activity is that known users have a contact profile in autopilot. Now contacts are created when we capture an anonymous visitor's email address which we then use as their unique identifier to create a contact record for them within the platform. There are a number of different ways that we can capture an email address but the most important ones are probably contact imports, form submissions and proactive heads up responses. So let's take a look at contact imports first by diving into the contact section of the dashboard, which you can access just here on the left hand side uh, with a little human uh, person icon. Now, there's really three main ways that you can import contacts into Autopilot. The first is via Salesforce or an app connection, which we're actually going to cover in a later webinar series uh, that we're putting together at the moment here at Autopilot, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but for today, the second and third options that you have available to you that we can take you through in today's session are list imports and manual additions. So to add contacts via a list import, you simply need to uh, click on this big green plus button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen and then select import and select a file from your computer to upload. Now, I typically recommend uploading a CSV file and really the reason I do this is that uh, you can really be sure that your formatting is captured correctly when you upload a CSV file. Um, but if you're looking to upload a, another file format, such as a uh, Excel document, we do also accept those and you can absolutely upload them. Just be uh, pretty careful when it comes to the formatting of cells, particularly around date formatting and number formatting. So when importing, the first step is to select the file from your computer. So I am going to go ahead and uh, select the CSV file that I've created with my contacts. Next, you can see here on my screen that you're asked to complete some simple field mapping. And this is really just making sure the fields that you have in your spreadsheet or your list um, are being mapped across into their correct or corresponding fields within Autopilot. Now at Autopilot, we have approximately 20 standard fields that you can map across to, uh, including first name, last name, email address. Um, but if we don't have a field that is a standard field that you're looking to map across, we do also allow you to create custom fields to store this data in. So the way in which you would do that is uh, select the drop down for the field you're looking to map against, click add a custom field and then enter in the name of that custom field. So I'm gonna map it across to hobbies. And most importantly, make sure you select the type of data that will be entered into this field from your list import. Um, because mine is going to be hobbies and is free form, I'm going to select text, uh, but note that you have a couple of different options, including true false, which is typically used if you have a checkbox, for example. Um, you can also enter in whole numbers and also those date fields that you want to import. But I'm going to go ahead and select text um, and then I can double check here that the rest of my fields are mapping across correctly. Now let's say for example I didn't want to map paying customer from my spreadsheet into autopilot. Well all you would need to do is leave that field blank and any field that hasn't been mapped to a corresponding autopilot field will just exclude when we upload that list. So this is just a quick way for those of you who have a huge list and maybe you don't want to import all of those fields and data sets into autopilot. Um, you can do that easily when you're importing just by leaving this field mapping blank 
for that specific field. Once you're happy with your field mapping, so you can hit continue. Uh, and actually, let me go back and just add in paying customer because I do want to capture that data set. But you can hit continue and then you'll see a quick preview of the data mappings that you've put in place. Uh, so first name, uh, it's just taking really the first contact that I had in my uh, spreadsheet and just showing me what the data in those fields will look like and the autopilot fields that they'll be mapping across to. Now, selecting continue again takes you through to our duplication step of the configuration here. Um, and what this is asking us is if we find an email address in the list that you're uploading uh, that matches an email address we already have in the system, what do you want us to do about that uh, duplication and how would you like us to dedupe it? Because again, just a quick reminder that it's that email address that we use as the unique identifier for every contact record in Autopilot. Now, as you can see from my screen, we give you three options when it comes to the duplication strategy. The first is to update the existing contact records with uh, new data from the spreadsheet. So we'll only update those fields that are currently empty against the existing contacts with the new data from the spreadsheet. This is really our recommended option. And the reason we do this is because uh, there's a high likelihood that if a contact is already in autopilot, that they've been triggered into journeys based on the information that's already existing against their contact record. Um, so we don't really wanna change that unless you absolutely have to, uh, which is why we recommend with going for this first option. Having said that, if you do want to update existing contacts with the information that's in your new spreadsheet, you can select the second option. And this will essentially overwrite uh, any data that's currently in uh, mapped fields for those contacts with the new data from your spreadsheet. Now, last but not least, we also have a don't modify them option. And what this means is if we find a duplicate contact record in autopilot, let's just ignore the new contact that's in your list upload uh, and just stick with whatever we already have in the system. So also that option uh, if you're looking to make sure the autopilot is your master. For today though, I'm gonna stick with the recommended option and just say, if this contact already exists in autopilot, only update fields uh, where we're having new information through this list upload. Now, hitting continue will let you uh, add all contacts on this list to a custom list or a predefined list within Autopilot. So you can see here that we actually automatically create a list for you that matches the name of the spreadsheet you're uploading, but you can remove that if you want to. Um, you can also add these contacts to an existing list or add a new list. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new list today. Uh, let's call this Autopilot 101 Training Contacts Import. And remember, whenever you are creating a new list or a new name, um, just check this green tick to make sure that that's actually created in autopilot. So now I can see that people are, be adding, are being added to my new list. So I can go ahead and click import for contacts. Um, you'll see the status of your import happening down the bottom right hand corner of your screen here. And you'll also notice that that list I created is now uh, in my autopilot account. And all of those four contacts that I just uploaded in my list are living within uh, that list within autopilot. Note that all contacts also get added to the all contacts list here. So those four uh, people that I just uploaded live within all contacts as well as that list that I specified. Now, if you don't have a full list of contacts to import, I did also mention that you can manually add a single contact at a time. And to do that, you just need to select the blue person icon above the green plus button. Um, as with the bulk upload, you can see here that you have the option to add custom fields uh, just by selecting the add custom field and then selecting the custom field from the drop down. Um, let's go again with our paying customer. 
let's add this to the profile of this person. And really from there, it's just a matter of popping in all their details and then clicking on add contact to create that contact record within autopilot. Um, key thing to note here, if you are going to add contacts manually, uh, please, please ensure that you provide an email address as that is going to be used as a unique identifier in autopilot moving forwards. Now, a few points to note about list imports and manual additions. So whenever a contact is added to your account, uh, again, they'll automatically be added to the all contacts list. If you then ever wanted to delete a contact, you can do this one by one by selecting the drop down to the far right of their, pro of their profile and then hitting delete. Um, you can also do a bulk deletion if you have to at some point in the future. And this can be done within all contacts or a list or a smart segment just by clicking manage and then uh, mass selecting those contacts that you would like to remove and hitting delete. Um, this also applies if you want to mass add people to a list. So bear that option in mind uh, as well when you are creating lists. Now, once you have your contacts in autopilot, there are a number of different ways that you can create uh, segments or lists. Um, and to do that, you just need to hit the create new button and then select whether you want to create a list, a smart segment or a folder. To highlight the difference between a list and a smart segment, so lists are static, which means that contacts must be manually added and removed from uh, by either yourself um, or from within a journey. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. Um, they're great if you're compiling a newsletter list or an attendee list because you really do want a static record of everybody that will be attending or has been attending. Um, but it's just really crucial for lists to remember that they are static and that you do need to manually add and remove people from lists if you're going to use this option. Now, smart segments, on the other hand, are dynamic lists that enable you to divide your contacts into meaningful groups using specific criteria. So, for example, is today their birthday or are they a paying customer? Now, here's how that works. So, let's just give it a name for today and hit create. Now, what happens with a smart segment is that you start with a total pool of your contacts and you can see up at the top right hand corner of my light box, I have 97 of 97 contacts matching. Then as you select the criteria that those contacts have to meet to be in the smart segment, you'll see the number decrease so that you're only left with those that qualify. There are a number of different criteria checks that you can put in place, including you know, whether somebody has submitted a specific form on your site or whether they have a specific field value against their contact record. Um, have they visited a certain page on your website or engaged with your emails in a different way? Um, last but not least, if you're a marketing team that are using UTM parameters, we also give you the option to segment your users based on the UTM parameters that they're visiting your pages with. Um, for today, though, uh, let's go ahead and um, actually create three examples that I would use for the work mode. So the first is um, when is somebody's birthday? So at the work mode, I actually want to send people a exclusive discount code on their birthday to encourage them to purchase a gift for themselves through my website. So for my smart segment, I'm going to look at the birthday field against their record. So I would select birthday. And then I really just want to build a smart segment for everybody whose birthday is today. Um, and then because it's a birthday, I'm going to say that this event repeats yearly so that next year they'll also be picked up into this smart segment. And really how this works is autopilot will be constantly checking against the contacts you have in your database to find anybody whose birthday is today. If their birthday is today, it'll pull them dynamically into the smart segment which we can use as a trigger for a journey. And then when it moves to tomorrow, that person's birthday will no longer be today. So they'll be automatically removed from the smart segment. 
Now, another smart segment that I might want to create for the work mode is um, gender, because let's say I have two types of content in my newsletter. One is for uh, females and one is for males. So I really want to segment my database based on whether they are uh, females or males so that I can send them the correct content. So again, I'm looking at a specific field against every contact record, which is gender. And for this smart segment, I'm going to say, I want everybody whose gender is female. And you can see at the top here, I actually only have two contacts in my account who have a gender field against their contact record that matches female. Um, if I were to change that and create a new segment for everybody who is male, again, I have two people who meet that requirement and therefore fall into my smart segment, which I can use as a trigger within a journey. Now, the third smart segment that I might need uh, is unsubscribes. And let's say I just want a list of everybody who's unsubscribed from my emails so that I can keep an eye on it and I know which contacts they are. Um, and I could, if I wanted to, um, just add them to a list uh, and make sure that they are not entered into any journeys in the future. So my criteria check here is going to be email status, and it would be unsubscribed. And because I just want a general list, I'm going to look for people who have unsubscribed from any email. And lucky me, I have no matches yet. Uh, but the first time that somebody unsubscribes from an email, they'll be automatically pulled into this smart segment. So I have an ongoing updated list that's happening automatically for me in the back end um, based on the automation that Autopilot uh, offers. Now, when you're happy with that smart segment, you can go ahead and create it. And that'll then live uh, within your contacts table here. And if you ever want to see the segment criteria um, that you're using in future, you can do so just by clicking on the criteria button at the top here. All right, last but not least, when it comes to contacts, you may have noticed when I was creating my list and smart segments that I also have an option for you to create a folder. Um, I know it's a dry organizational topic, but I really do encourage all of you to create folders for your contacts just so you can easily organize your list and smart segments and then quickly find them in future. So again, you can find folders uh, alongside lists and smart segments. So importing your contacts either manually or via a list upload is great if you have the data to hand, but what about new leads that fill out a form on your site? Well, the good news is that Autopilot does have an inbuilt built form capture functionality that will allow you to capture form submissions in the platform and then create or update a contact record for everybody that comes through this channel. This is actually done through the journeys part of the autopilot dashboard, which you can access here via the paper plane icon. And then you'll want to head on into a new journey canvas. Uh, and we actually capture form submissions through the form submitted trigger, which you can see me adding here to my canvas. Now to show you this working end to end, uh, let's actually go ahead and capture a form on my demo site. So across the work mode, I actually have a uh, newsletter sign up form that's shown on every page except for the home page. So navigating to the About Us page, you'll see this form appears on the right hand side of my screen. Now, I'm currently capturing all of my form submissions through a WordPress plugin and then manually uploading these lists into an email marketing platform each week to send my newsletter out. Uh, it sounds like a very time consuming and uh, kind of repeating process, but the good news is that through autopilot, I can actually capture these form submissions directly, then set up an automated journey to add these subscribers to a list and send them a thank you email for subscribing. So all three steps that I used to have to do in different platforms, I can now consolidate into one and actually automate it so that I really don't need to touch it again in future. Sounds good, right? <laughs> so the first step is to copy the URL that the form sits on, head back into autopilot and click on the form submitted shape to configure it. Selecting the track new form, 
will allow you to capture a new form on your website. And because it's my newsletter form, let's type in the newsletter subscription and paste the URL of that page into the form URL uh, field here before hitting continue. Now what's happening here is that Autopilot is scanning that URL for the tracking code and then ingesting any form fields that it finds on that page. So here it's giving me a demo. It's found my form that I have on, uh, on that page. And because Autopilot is so smart, um, I can tick this box here to say that this form is actually going to be on a lot of pages across my website. So to save me from having to set up a form submitted shape for every page that it's on, I just want Autopilot to capture submissions across any page that it finds this form on. If for some reason you didn't want to do that, let's say you only really wanted to capture form submissions on this specific page, you would just leave that checkbox uh, unmarked and hit continue. And then it's at this point that you'll want to do some standard field mappings again to make sure the fields in your form uh, match across to their correct autopilot fields. Now we do try and do this automatically for you by picking up um, some standard fields such as email and first name, but you can see here, if we don't manage to pick that up for you automatically, you can just select that field from the drop down, or again, add a custom field if it's not one that we already have in file. Hitting continue, you can then add that form to your shape. So really it's as simple as that. Now I know some of you have before told me it sounds like a bit of a ninja trick. Um, so I'm actually going to show you this working across my site. So don't worry, we, are, we will get to that and you'll see it working full circle. Now, I mentioned um, that I wanted to send a confirmation email to people off the back of submitting a form on my website. And I also wanted to add them to a list within Autopilot so that I knew uh, everybody that had signed up for my newsletter. So why don't we actually go ahead and build out this journey within Autopilot so I can show you what that looks like and we can call this your first journey in the Autopilot platform. Okay, well, as most of you know, uh, autopilot journeys are made up of triggers, actions, and conditions. So triggers start the journey or define a user profile um, of that contact so they can enter the journey. Actions are then the square shapes that do things within a journey. And condition shapes are the octagons down the bottom here that describe a set of criteria that a user has to meet throughout the journey in order to flow through to the next uh, shape within their journey paths. Again, shapes are connected with these connection arrows here that you just drag from one shape to another to connect them. And you'll often see an outcome wheel on the right hand corner of shapes that allow you to connect based on different interactions that people are taking within your journey. Now to create my newsletter sign up journey, I'm going to use the form submitted shape as my trigger and then connect two corresponding actions. So the add to list that we mentioned and also the send email action. So to configure these shapes, I really just need to click on them as you saw me do with the form submitted shape and then follow the configuration prompts. So in the case of the add to list, um, that's pretty simple. It's just asking me to select the list that I'd like to add my newsletter sign up leads to. Um, I can either select a list that is already existing in my account or I can go ahead and add a new list. So let's do that today. And again, remember to hit that uh, green plus button to actually create that within Autopilot. And then when I get out of it, I've now connected my form submitted shape to an add to list action so that anytime somebody submits that newsletter sign up form on my contact us page, they're going to be automatically added to my new newsletter signups list within Autopilot. I have that constant record there and I could always use this list as a trigger for another journey should I wish to do so. 
that. Now for the fun part, creating an email. So to create an email, you simply need to click on the email shape and then select new email from the configuration options uh, so that you can come through and select the best option that fits your needs. So we actually offer three different ways in which you can create an email within autopilot. If you're looking to start from a blank canvas and create a text-based email, you can select the blank HTML option here and then customize it as needed. Um, this is really a great option if you're looking to send a short personalized email that doesn't look too stylized. Um, we use this a lot here at Autopilot when we're sending automated emails from our sales team. If you're using an HTML email template builder, however, such as MailChimp or B, um, you can also import your templates into Autopilot by selecting this second option, which is to upload your own HTML. A couple of really important things to note here. Um, if you do want to edit your templates once you've uploaded them into Autopilot, please make sure you have editable tags in your templates so that you can actually make those edits within the platform. Um, for those of you that haven't come across editable tags in the past, don't worry, I do have a really detailed support article on adding editable tags to your HTML templates. So I'll make sure that's included in my follow up email to you all today. Uh, and you can read through that in your own time. The other important thing that I wanted to make you aware about um, when uploading your own HTML templates is that we do recommend having all of the images that you're going to use in that HTML in a zip folder that you call images, all lowercase. Um, you then just need to upload that alongside the HTML template when you select continue off the back of the upload HTML option. But again, don't worry, I'll also include a support article on this in my follow up email to you all. Now, if you want to make use of an autopilot template, we actually have six basic templates that you can choose from. Um, all have been built around best in class marketing campaigns and are fully customizable as well as mobile responsive. So let me take you through what they look like and how you would use them. Now, because I'm sending a confirmation email to my newsletter subscribers, I'm going to go ahead and select the welcome template today. Um, actually, change my mind. I'm going to select the announcement because I quite like the look of this big image in the header here. And I have some ideas about how I can customize that to um, be in with the look and feel of the work mode site. So let's choose that one and hit continue. Autopilot is going to populate that template for me. And because we have editable tags in all of our emails, I can actually go ahead now and fully customize this um, to suit the look and feel of my brand and also add in my own copy uh, images and unsubscribe link. So let me just give you a quick demo of uh, how I would build this email for my brand today um, with the thought in mind that it's a thank you for subscribing emails. Um, first thing I want to do is add in my logo at the top here. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Great. Uh, now I have that image that I was telling you all I had in mind. Um, so let's go and add that in today. Great. Um, and now for the copy. So hi, and then I want to keep in that first name variable with my fallback option. Um, welcome to Welcome to the Work Mode community. Thank you for signing up for our weekly newsletter. Stay tuned for the latest and greatest workwear inspiration and styles direct to your inbox every Tuesday. And then let's add in a call to action as well. Can't wait till Tuesday. Um, why not jump straight in and start shopping? And let's add in 
shop now into my button and then I will add a hyperlink to my work mode homepage. Perfect. And then last but not least, I also want to update this with my details. Um, let's go founder and pop in my own picture. Great. Um, and then let's just pop in my and then I have the unsubscribe link in here which is fantastic um, one thing to note is that we do make it compulsory for uh, everybody to have the unsubscribe link in their emails um, just to meet our acceptable use policy if you did want to change the way in which the unsubscribe looks though you can do that all you need to do is pop in your own custom copy um, so let's say, please remove me from the mailing list. And then uh, hi, uh, highlight the text that you've popped in. And then you can add a, a custom or universal unsubscribe link just by selecting this plus button um, next to the personalization variable options that again, you can add into your emails if you are looking to personalize them, a bit like I did with the first name. But again, I'm using the custom unsubscribe to link it to my custom copy. As you can see, it is now doing at the bottom. Okay, so I think I'm almost good to go. The one thing I want to do is add in a subject line um, and you can also use personalization variables in the subject line. So let's go with first name. Um, thanks for signing up to work mode newsletter. Now, I can send myself a test um, just by clicking send, making sure my correct email address is in the email box here and clicking send. Uh, if I'm happy with that, I can then go ahead and publish. Um, really recommend you do send yourselves a test of your email though. And if you're going to be using um, HTML heavy email templates, then also encourage you to invest in using a platform such as Litmus, where you can test your email templates across browsers and devices to make sure that it's coming through as desired from the autopilot platform. Once you're happy with it though, go ahead and click publish and then add that email to your shape um, so that it can be sent off the back of somebody submitting that form on my website. If you ever wanted to update or edit this email in future, you can do so. All you need to do is click on the shape and then click edit selected email, come in and make your changes. And then uh, just make sure when you do make those changes that you republish that email within the shape so that those changes actually take effect within the email. Now, two really important things to remember about emails. Um, one, whenever you create an email within Autopilot, we automatically assign it a backend ID. So if you ever want to use that template, uh, sorry, that email again as a template, please make sure that you duplicate that email first by clicking on Manage Existing selecting the template that you want to, uh, sorry, the email that you want to use as a template and then clicking duplicate from um, the uh, drop down menu on the right hand side. And you'll see that we've given it a two. So a new name for that email means we've given it a new ID in the back end um, so that this will now be considered a new email within autopilot. If you don't duplicate the email, any changes that you make to the email uh, that you're using as a template will actually be made to the original email in the original journey. So just keep that in mind and please, please do go ahead and duplicate emails if you want to use them as a template. Don't go ahead and just make changes to that original IT email because you will be affecting the very first email that you created for that. 
The second thing to remember about emails is that Autopilot has an inbuilt safety mechanism whereby contacts can only receive an email once. So if you do want to override this because you're sending a transactional email, for example, um, you will need to select contacts can receive this email more than once from the configuration options that you see here on my screen. Okay, so I've created my first journey and now I want to send it live. So really all I need to do to send it live is click the publish journey button at the top right hand corner of my screen. And let's go ahead and do that. You can see my journey's been published. It's now live. Uh, and so anytime somebody submits that form on my website, they'll be triggered into this journey. Why don't we go ahead and do it? Okay, so that form is on my about us page. So I'll enter in my email address and my first name and then click sign me up. Um, what's going to happen on my work mode demo site is that it's actually going to tell me that I'm already signed up to receive the newsletter. But from Autopilot's point of view, that's fine because we still consider this to be a uh, form submission as it were on the back end. So if we navigate back into Autopilot, a couple of things are going to happen. Um, one, because I've published my journey, I now have access to a live view. If I click on the live view, you can see that I get two numbers down the bottom of my shapes. The number on the left hand side is the total number of contacts that have progressed through that shape for all time. And the number on the right hand side is the total number of contacts that have stopped or ended their journey in that shape as you can see down here for my send email and my add to list. Now we know somebody's come through the journey. Um, let's go ahead though and have a look at my dashboard where we can also see that activity has populated here. Um, first of all, I visited the About Us page, then I submitted the newsletter form, and now because I submitted that form, I've been triggered into the journey and I was sent the uh, the template demo email, uh, just remembering what I called it there. Uh, and if I was to go into my emails, I would see that email sitting in my inbox. Now, the last thing to bring it full circle, uh, alongside sending an email, we also within that journey had me uh, being added to a list. So let's go ahead and make sure I'm there. And there I am in my list. Um, so you can see how powerful it is to capture a form on your website, set up an email, and then complete your first journey within the autopilot platform built around that form capture and the send email. Two other really important things that you can access when you send a journey live. Um, so let's go ahead and find my running journeys. Whenever you do click into the live view, uh, it's here that you'll have the option to stop a journey. So bear that in mind if you ever do want to manually stop a journey in future. Um, and the other thing to note about uh, journeys is after a period of time, you'll also get access to email reports within the live view. And you'll notice if you check back in um, a couple of minutes that I have a blue reporting icon at the top right hand corner of my email that I can click on to access a full report of this email. Um, so two really good things that you can find there in the live view once you've published your journey. So to end today's session, I did promise to leave a 15 minute slot for Q&A. So I'm pleased to say that we've had a number of questions through and I'm now going to start at the top and make my way down the bottom. Um, so if you've been saving your questions till the end, now's the time to add them to the list. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds and then let's dive into the questions and answer as many as we can. <laughs> 